Hello and welcome to Comic Book Junto, episode 54. I'm your host, Octavius A. Newman. I'm the creator of Bear Fruit, and I'm here with my co-host, first podcast in 2017, Adam Jimmy Sips. <laughs> Starting it off right. Keep it, keep it rolling. Keep it rolling. Starting it off right. 2017 off on a good foot, baby. Jimmy Superfly Snooker Tetris. Oh, no. He's wanted for a murder in he 1982. Got, he, he, he got cleared, though. I don't know. They said he got cleared. I, I mean, like, they... Hey, look. I think this is an OJ situation. Is it? I do think that this is an OJ situation. In 82? I think Jimmy uh, uh, Superfly Snooker, who I once met, on the boardwalk in Atlantic City. Okay. $25 for an autograph. I said, no, sir. Uh. No, sir. But uh, look, I like wrestling, so sure, I'll take it. I'm a, yeah. I'm a WWF legend. World, Adam, wildli- world Jimmy, Wildlife. Superfly. Federation. Not a murderer. Snooker. Yeah. Tetris. Yeah. I'm cool with this. There it is. Yeah. Well, we started off controversial 20, 2017 <laughs> on a great foot, you know, messing up the first episode. But you know what? <laughs> We're transparent around here. We tell the truth. We tell it like it is. Hi, my name is. Hi, my. Hi, my name is. I. We out here. <laughs> <laughs> this is a uh, look. This is not us setting a trend for 2017. Or if it is, this is us saying, "This is if life." You, if if you fail, you pick yourself up. Right. You dust yourself up. Right. You do not hit stop on that record. No, button. you get it wrong the right way. <laughs> you get it wrong the right way. You keep moving in public on air. That's right. How are you, sir? I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm okay. How's your 2017 so far? Thus far, I'm still alive. Mm-hmm. I'm still here. Praise the Lord. A- indeed. Yeah. Praise him. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I mean, I'm good, man. I feel good. We, Man, we have a lot of plans for 2017 comic book <laughs> Junto. We were just talking about it before we hit record. We were overwhelmed. Yeah, that's we true. overwhelmed. But we have a lot of new things that we want to do for the show, mm-hmm. and we need to figure out the sequence for those things. Yeah. Otherwise, we're just going to stuff it all in a musket and shoot it at you. We got muskets? Well, you know, like either a shotgun blast approach. You put all those things together, and you mm. just like... Scatter shot. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why I'm <laughs> obsessed with the firearms. No problem. Uh, a- analogy right now. Yeah, it's all good. It's because we're blowing up out here. We're blowing up. So mm-hmm. listen, let's just get this thing started off right. Mm-hmm. This podcast is brought to you by Barefoot. You probably heard that from the little intro thing there. But you can go to barefoot.com, sign up for the newsletter. You can buy some merchandise from the store. You can also buy some official comic book junto merchandise um, from tpublic forward slash user forward slash comic book junto. And you can grab some stuff there. Also... Starting off 2017, we got something new. Arr. We got vo- <laughs> we got a dog in the studio. We got a voicemail. So we talked about the fact that we were going to do this, and we actually did it. So if you guys want to leave us voicemails, here's the number. Yo, take my number down. Let me see your phone. Yeah. Let me see your phone. Here you go. Let me give you my number. Okay. 215. Representing the 215. Representing okay, Philadelphia. Got, that's 215. Yeah, vital. 948. Uh-huh. 27. Four two. That again is two one five nine four eight two seven four two. Leave us voicemails. Here's the deal: if you don't want us to use it on the show, say that. Otherwise, you can hear your voice on the show. That is correct. So if you want to submit talkback questions, if you want to just say what's up, if you want to disagree, if you like what we think, if you don't like what we think, if you think Adam's right about Rogue One, <laughs> if you think I'm right about Rogue One, if you you know want to give us five stars and a positive comment on iTunes, you just want to let us know that we did that you did that. Pick up your phone. Exactly. Pick up the phone like Travis told you last year. Two one five nine four eight two seven four two. How long till that's like? Committed to memory. Uh, it's got to be soon because I have a feeling we're going to do that all the time. It took me, I don't know, what, what is it? We've been doing the show almost a year. It took me maybe six months to be able to say the email address yeah. with a straight face and get yeah. all the letters in the correct places. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. hit us up at a comic book. Ju- oh, sh- hit us up at comic. And you look, we no, all episode 54 and I'm still messing up. Yeah, it's not hey. going to stop no time soon. No human. We're over halfway to 100 though. Yeah. Yeah, we are. We got sixty some episodes total, including one shots. We have things to celebrate. We're yeah. we're, uh, we're uploading to YouTube. We are on YouTube. Listen, good thing pointing that out. Mm-hmm. Internet listeners of Compu Junto, we need your help. We are on YouTube. We are uploading all the past episodes of Comic Book Junto on YouTube. And afterwards, we're going to be doing some YouTube live stuff. We heard you. Um, I put a Twitter poll out. Comic Book Junto put a Twitter poll out. Both polls. Ultimately, we're asking, hey, where do you want us to do live stuff? We gave a bunch of options. Both polls picked YouTube. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put it on YouTube. That's right. Now, we want to get a custom URL. 
In order to do that, we need to get at least 100 subscribers on YouTube. I think we're at 40-something right now. Oh, we can do that. So we'd appreciate it if you guys could subscribe to our YouTube. We're not going to give you the long, jumbled website because that's the whole thing. We're trying to get youtube.com forward slash comic book Junto. Yeah, look, just say, hey, Siri, YouTube, comic book Junto, you're fine. You're going right. to be fine. Right. We believe in you. Just go on YouTube, type in comic book Junto, J-U-N-T-O. You should see the you know fist bump pop up and just subscribe. Hit the little bell too to get notified when we post up new videos. YouTube, it's a new thing. I've been doing all kinds of research and there's certain ways you got to do stuff to get notified and all that kind of thing. But subscribe and hit that little bell so that when we post up a new update, a new upload, you'll get the notification on your phone. So not only are you going to have Comic Book Junto on SoundCloud, on Overcast, on Google Play, on iTunes, you're also going to have it on YouTube. And we're going to be doing video versions in 2017. That's the goal. We mm -hmm. want to do video versions of the show. We want to do, you know, trailer reaction videos. We want to do all kinds of stuff. So getting mm -hmm. to 100 subscribers is step one. After that, we'll move on to the next piece. Yeah. How are you feeling about that? I feel great. I, I, I know that you're adding several videos a day up on YouTube. It's really exciting to get some of those videos like popping up on my notifications. Mm -hmm. Comic Book Junto has a new video up on YouTube. And what, we just put up one 2016 and beyond. Yes. I think that was episode three. Episode three. It's fun to revisit that stuff. And now yeah. it's just kind of being delivered to me in a, a little package like, hey, this is what we were doing one year ago. Mm -hmm. Listen in. See how far you've come. Yeah. How, I mean, how see how far you were right you were. For sure. Listening to episode one was like, wow. Were they on ambient? We have come a long just way. just like vibing out. What was it? Hey, uh, welcome to the uh, Quiet Storm yeah. episode of Comic Book Junto. <laughs> I'm your host, Octavius A. Newman, and I'm here with Adam uh, Jeremiah Tetris. <laughs> and um, we are going to get into some comic book news here. How did you feel about uh, Star Wars? Yeah. I'm just glad I saw it. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's I so many awkward pauses. We're, in that we're going into this Man. last... We, we li Listening to the stuff that we were doing a, a, one year ago. Yeah. It is it, it is Nostalgic. a world of difference. Yeah. But it's, it's fun. And I'm, I'm glad that we're doing it that way. And we'll have all of them all caught up. In no time, mm -hmm. lickety split. The goal is to have all of the epi be caught up by February. So okay. having all the episodes up by February and putting up new ones and hopefully getting the video shortly afterwards. Um, so one of the things that I recognized that I wanted to do in 2016 that was hard was come up with a comic book junto best of. Yes. So I thought it was a good idea for me to ask you guys, the listeners, to start keep, keeping track of some of your favorite moments throughout the year as you're listening. Yeah. If there's a funny segment, if there's a favorite book of the week, if there's a favorite argument, debate, or one shot or something like that, you know, just keep track of those things. So as we continue to go on and we start asking you guys what your favorite pieces are and stuff like that you know you have those things in mind i know i personally am going to be listening to every episode and writing down notes so yeah. when december rolls around i'm not like what episode was that no no we're going to be diligent this time yeah yeah and we got more stuff coming uh -huh. so i'm excited um the, uh, look big news episode uh uh first episode of 2017 Big news right now. Listeners, I'm sharing this with you right now. Okay. This is the fastest episode we will ever do. <laughs> All right. This is it. Here it comes. <laughs> okay. 59 minutes. I, I guess because we, we already go. we already nine minutes in. We ain't even done no Let's news yet. Roll, baby. Okay. Well, first thing I want to do is I want to say I'm really excited about movies in 2017. Oh my God. Okay, look, Octavius made this list. And we're, we're looking at the I'm looking at this list right now. I'm looking at it as well. He he made this list. Of all of the movies that are coming out in 2017 and the dates of when those movies are coming out. And the idea here is we're going to try to see as many of these films as possible and, and do, do a one shot, one shot movie for as on many as well. of them, like each of them, if we can. If we can. Although I'm looking at some of these and I'm thinking, mm, how are we going to do it when three movies come out on the same day? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. So what we want to know from you is this. What are the movies that you're looking forward to coming out in 2017? If you're listening on SoundCloud, leave a comment on SoundCloud. If you're listening slash watching on YouTube, leave your comment in the comment section. If you yeah. are on Twitter, shoot us a tweet at Octavius A. Newman. Adam on Twitter is? Uh, Adam Tetris, A-D-A-M. T-E-T-E-R-U-S. Help us out. What movies do we need to 
DC and do one shots on? Which ones are you looking most forward to? I know for me off the top of my head, that's coming out in January. I want to see Split. Yeah. New okay. M. Night Shyamalan. Drunk. How do you feel about Triple X, Xan- the return of Xander Cage? <laughs> I want to see Triple X return as Xander Cage because that movie looks so ridiculous. It does look ridiculous. So I'm, I'm, I'm here for that sort of thing. Uh, I want to see Lego Batman. Absolutely. That's coming out in February. John Wick Chapter 2 coming out the same day in February. You know. You know. You know. You know. That we're seeing the Great Wall. Absolutely seeing the Great Wall of Matt Damon. That's right. Absolutely going to go see that. That is right. Um, another thing is February, we got Logan. We got Logan Kong. is March, in fact. I mean, excuse me, March. We got yeah. Logan. We, we got Kong Skull Island. We got Power Rangers. We got Ghost in the Shell. Oof. I mean, it's a, that's, that's a big March. So that's the first yeah. quarter of... 2017. So, uh-huh. looking at January, February, March, what movies do you want to see? <laughs> Hold on. This dude wrote Emoji Movie. Well, okay. we're going to see the Emoji Movie because, <laughs> you know, I, I'm not expecting good things, but it's going to be something fun to talk trash about. <sighs> or, you know, what? never know. You might mess around and be good. They're going to whitewash that whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> every every, every uh, little hand gesture is going to be white. How could they they could have used the yellow one. Couldn't even <laughs> use the yellow one. How are you going to whitewash emojis? <laughs> oh, man. All right, so that's the first thing. Janu- mm. Looking at January, February, March, what are the movies you're most excited about? What do you want to see us, hear us talk about? Let us know in the comment section wherever you're listening or watching, and we will keep those in consideration. Now, how about we get into this news? Let's get into this news. Okay, first thing on the top. Uh, you have a, a piece in here about a cinematographer mm-hmm. who is going to be taking on the Han Solo movie. Mm-hmm. So the success of Rogue One means we're going to see a lot of Star Wars stories. Yes. Uh, and the next one that I can think of off the top of my head is the Han Solo prequel with mm-hmm. a young Han and a young Lando Calrissian, mm-hmm. played by Mr. Glover. That's right. Played by Charles Gambino, a.k.a. Donald Glover. That Not is Not Donald, Donald Glover, a.k.a. Charles Gambino. No, 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 no. It's the other way no, around. No, it's true. De- Donald Glover, fantastic actor, um, awesome comedian, awesome writer, um, and a fantastic musical artist as well. Just a yeah. multi-talented dude. Oh, he's He's going to be playing uh, Lando Calrissian, which is going to be great. I cannot wait. And the person who is going to be the... Um, cinematographer on the movie is Bradford Young. Now, Bradford Young... Yeah, why is that important? He's, it's important because he worked on your favorite movie of 2016, Arrival. Yes. And he's also black. Yes. And you, I, that, that, to me, he also worked on Selma. Yes. Um, he also worked on... Uh, what else we got in here? You see a most his... violent year with Oscar Isaac? Yes. It was a was it? What did he do on that? He was a cinematographer. Cinematographer on that? That movie was dope, too. That was a beautiful movie. Yeah, I see that. on. I'm on his IMDb right now. You can check him out. He's got all his information there. But yeah, Bradford Young, black man. You know, it's always important to see, you know, accurate representation and seeing that happen, seeing different people be able to get behind the camera and make beautiful stuff. Because... I mean, when you see a most violent year, you're like, whoever did this yeah. and whoever did Arrival, they killed it. Yeah. So when you see those movies particularly, because they are visually beautiful, and then you imagine that coming over into a Star Wars movie. That makes me excited because Rogue One, if nothing else, and I loved it, was beautiful. Beautiful. Don't get me started. So, you, stop I'm, with the I'm fake not, compliments, look, I'm not even, Adam. I'm not even going, Don't I'm bring not even, this into 2017. I'm not, even, I'm not dragging that, that that old argument. I'm leaving it behind. It's impossible. I'm leaving it behind. Are we leaving all, the whole Star Wars franchise behind? <laughs> no. I'm leave, look, as far as I'm concerned, 2016 People are still was tweeting a long, about this. long time ago and the galaxy far away. Okay. So I'm not even bringing it into 2017. Everybody knows I'm right. The reason that I'm bringing this <laughs> up right now <laughs> is, is that we got it. We still getting <laughs> tweets about it. Is because we I got I, one today it is it's, look what you've started no yo, it's significant to me that these movies are beautiful mm-hmm. and i'm really excited for the new han solo movie and if they've got a guy like bradford young doing the cinematography for this then it means that they are prior- prioritizing the way that this movie looks and that's yeah. great yeah that's great yeah can't wait all right next up more interesting news about accurate well, hold on. Let me back up. Let, mm-hmm. let, let me pull it sure. back a little bit. Let me not tell everything. Beep. So Beep. if you remember back in a, a little while ago, we had some conversations about the, an, this, this animated Spider-Man movie. Yeah. So some news about that is back. We've been having conversations about st- st- um, Spider-Man Homecoming, that coming out next year. Mm-hmm. Um, so here's a little bit of news that's come out about the animated movie. Here's what I'm going to read. And you tell me, what this sounds like. So 
first thing is this came from a casting call that Sony put out. Mm-hmm. Um, the casting call has since ended, but here, here's, what, here's what it says. Quote, a young African-American Puerto Rican teen from Brooklyn. A word. He is new to his suburban school and now feeling out of place. Overwhelmed, pressured with new responsibilities and dealing with puberty while trying to fit in, he must do his best to stay out of trouble. Along the way, in developing his identity, he's losing old friends but making new ones. Making a new one. Pete. As for Pete... Don't go thinking the character has any relationship to Peter Parker. This is what this is saying. Um, According to the cast sheet, um, here's a description of Pete. A young, slightly geeky Asian-American teen. He's smart, sweet, and encouraging, although very unlikely, unlike any of the the friends Terrence had in his old Brooklyn neighborhood. Pete proves to be a good fit for Terrence making good decisions. You know. Who does that sound like is going to be in this animated Spider-Man movie? It's the dynamic duo. It's Miles Morales and Genki. That's what it sounds like to me. That's what it sounds like to me. That is exciting. That is very exciting. If If Sony is going to release a full-length feature film, animated Spider-Man movie, the first feature film, animated Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be Miles. Hey. I'm here. I'm about it. I'm very, very, very here. And I really hope that this is not that kind of like, uh, what a red herring, where mm. from time to time a studio will be like, oh, you thought we were going to zig, but we zagged on you. I mean, I'm, I'm hoping it's nothing along those lines. I, I really hope this casting call is legit. Yeah, we hope so, because the casting call, like I said, is over. Mm-hmm. So it seems like whatever needs so to be done is guy. done. Yeah. And that's really exciting to hear. From that explanation, anybody who's in the comics is like, are y'all casting Miles Morales oh, you know. in Ginky? You know. Hey. Yeah, I'm here for that. So yeah, I'm about that. What we got new? What we got next here? Uh, we're also talking about the the upcoming Wolverine movie, which will be the last Wolverine movie, as far as we know, featuring Hugh Jackman. But that's what this story is about. Mm-hmm. Apparently, reportedly... Mr. Jackman is a little hesitant to give up the mantle. Yeah. Seems like he's kind of, well, we heard a little bit about this because we know that Ryan Reynolds played Deadpool last year. Very successful movie. One of the really big rated R, one of the best rated R action movies ever. Mm -hmm. And one of the first times since Blade, I think, that we've seen like a Marvel rated R Marvel movie, right? Yeah. As far as I know. Pretty sure. So. Which Ryan Reynolds was in. Yeah. Blade Three, Trinity. Yeah, yeah, you're right. E. He's in. Yeah, that dude's all over the Marvel. Yes, Cinematic he was. <laughs> yeah, he was. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And DC too. He's double dipping. Yeah, he's all over the place. Uh huh. You don't know what he wanted to do. Uh huh. He was de- he was Deadpool twice. He was hanging out with Blade. Yeah. And he was uh, Green Lantern. Man, all over the place. Worlds collide. <laughs> well, this guy Ryan Reynolds is saying that he would love to have Wolverine, aka, I mean. Hugh Jackman, aka Wolverine, <laughs> you doing the Gambino Donald Glover I'm, thing? I'm doing again. it backwards, yeah. Um, would love to have him in one of the Deadpool movies. So he's like, we talked about this in one of the past episodes. We just need to get the fans behind him and get the fans excited and get them, you know, trying to convince him to come over. But all we've heard from Hugh Jackman up until now is, "Now nah, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done." Then this comes. Yeah. So there's basically the idea of having Deadpool and Wolverine in the same film. Fans are getting so uh, excited about the the idea of that, just the premise of that, even if there's no project behind it, that Hugh Jackman and Ryan Reynolds are forced to respond. Yeah. Be like, yeah, I mean, that sounds kind of cool. And now we have Hugh Jackman thinking, maybe, Mm -hmm. Maybe he'll stick around with the claws. Maybe yeah. maybe he's not done, bub. Yeah. Maybe he's going to do one more. Because could be. One more again. Because he can actually do something like Deadpool where he can just go wild. That right. would be amazing. Right. Especially be amazing. With, with John Wick, the same director from oh, John Wick. God. Can you imagine? I watched John Wick again um, on on New Year's Eve Eve. It's perfect. On that movie is perfect. December 30th. Say New Year's Eve Eve? I did. Okay. The Eve of New Year's Eve. <laughs> okay. Um, I, watched, I watched it on New Year's Eve Eve with Eve. Oh. Yeah. She came. Uh-huh. Isn't she married to like a billionaire? Don't know. She was repping Rough Riders. It was cool. Interesting. Yeah, we were talking about old Philly. It was okay. great. It was All right, great. cool. Thank you, Eve. Really appreciate you listening to the show. Thank you for the five stars and the positive comment. And thank you for, you know, your years of Rough Riders. Absolutely. Pitbull in the skirt. <laughs> <laughs> so here's what Hugh Jackman says. He goes, I'm hesitating because I could totally see how that's perfect talking about being a Deadpool movie. Yeah. But the timing may be all wrong. Yeah. 
So, Meanwhile, Reynolds on the other side says, I have no idea if I can change his mind talking about Hugh Jackman. And he says, but it's the audience. And I would exclusively exploit that relationship to get Hugh back for another one. Now, there was already a little bit of talk back and forth like, okay, Wolverine's going to show up in this new Deadpool movie. And no, he's not. And maybe he is. So, you know, we really don't know what exactly is going on. But it's exciting the fact that he's actually considering it. Who knows? Let's see how well Logan does. Gotta believe how well Logan does is going to play a role in what decisions made, how much money they throw at Hugh. Oh, yeah. If Logan, because you gotta remember, this is the first rated R movie that that the actual like that Hugh Jackman is Hugh doing. Jackman has done yeah. as Wolverine. That's right. Wolverine is the most berserker rage, yeah. action packed, like bloody character significantly more than Deadpool. Mm-hmm. So if the if the world responds well to this, Hugh might be like, they throw that bag at him like, Hugh, mm-hmm. we got a bag here for you. And they, I get the feeling that when Hugh Jackman is performing as Wolverine, he's doing it as the neutered Wolverine, the Hollywood Wolverine, the one that wears leather, that doesn't have a suit, the one yeah, that doesn't yeah, yeah, curse. Yeah. You know, they, like, it's a different Wolverine. It's not the Wolverine we've read for the, all these years. Yeah, so maybe, maybe if he gets the opportunity to do something different, to just bust out a little bit, then it's not quite like, oh, it's just the same character over and over again. Right. He gets some freedom. I would really appreciate that. Mm-hmm. But speaking on uncertain cinematic projects. Boy, I tell you. We got some word from a man, the Batman, mm. Ben Affleck. The Batman. The Batman. Yes. And it's a little disconcerting. Ben Affleck is saying this movie, The Batman, that we've been talking about, that's coming up, that they're mm-hmm. working on the script for. Mm-hmm. It's not a done deal. It's yeah, not a sure thing. Yeah, he's, he's, because one of the things that's important to know about this story, Justice League Part 2 has already been moved on the calendar to make room for Ben Affleck's The Batman. That's right. So, you yeah, know, they're making moves around this, but that doesn't seem to be moving Ben Affleck. No, Affleck seems to be responding to the backlash that they caught from doing Batman versus Superman. I'm sorry, Batman v Superman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Pardon me, I misspoke. Uh, I think Affleck was really. I mean, how could you not be affected by the negativity that came at you? Right. If you would just wrap that project and people are like, yeah, especially if you're the award winning director. Yeah, exactly. So Affleck is, he seems to be taking this kind of defensive, I'm just going to pussyfoot around the reality of the situation in order to say, I'm not going to do it unless it's quality, which sure sounds like I'm not going to do it if it's going to be like the last one. Well, that's what ha- this is how I'm reading it because what he you're says, F like says, it's not a set thing and there's no script. If it doesn't come together in a way I think is really great, I'm not going to do it. And I resp- and I'm going to tell you this. <clears throat> this is what I want to hear. I'm a huge Batman fan. Yeah. From the guy who is directing, acting and possibly helping write the Batman, that's what I want to hear. Mm -hmm. From the guy who directed The Town, he directed The Town, right? Yeah. From the guy who directed Argo, from the guy who directed, what's his new movie that's coming out right now? Well, whatever that's called. Did he he do The the Accountant? Was that him? He was acting in it and he did very well in it, as far if you ask me. Mm. Um, But... So I'm um, I'm I am DBing him real quick because I want to pull up what he's directed. Mm-hmm. But you know, he we know that he he killed it in um, Argo. We know that he killed it in the town. We know that he is is a, is an excellent actor and all that kind of stuff. And his new movie coming up um, is called Live by Night. That's okay. coming up I think this week or next week. Uh-huh. So what I want to hear from that guy is if it don't work, I ain't doing it. Yeah. You're not about to have me. This, this is literally what he said. He says, I'm not going to write and direct anything that I don't think is good enough to be made. That, I think that's an excellent point. Now, here's the real quick kicker. I'm definitely going to make sure I have something that is special. There's not enough money in the world to make a mediocre version of Batman worth it. Well, hold on. But is that what you, ideally, I, ideally, isn't that what you want to hear? Absolutely. That, I, I, that is what Adam, Jimmy, Superfly, Snooker wants to hear. Yeah. 
That is not what Jeff Johns is probably thinking. He's like, oh, really? Is there no amount of money to make a mediocre Batman? Because let me tell you what I am capable of doing. Okay, sure. Turn that Batman out. But we already, Rick Famuyiwa yeah. is already gone. Uh huh. We, we heard rumblings that possibly the Aquaman director was going to be gone, but he has since clarified, no, 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 we're good. Yeah. You know? So what I don't want to hear is a conversation like this. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, no, I get. I don't it. I get want it. the feeling of like, okay, okay, Warner Brothers, wh- what are y'all doing? Yeah, you've got what? What award did he win for a director? Best best director, right? What's that? What's that award Affleck? called? Yeah, uh, I don't know. I, I, I'm not. I'm not familiar. Well, you an award winning director doesn't. You don't just find those like outside got, your front door. He got best. <laughs> <laughs> no, you do not. You don't just walk he, down the street and find an award-winning director. Like, I mean, he got he got best director, most likely to dress up as a bat, and and he I deserves mean, it. Yeah, he got it. He nailed that. But one. but either way, those of you that are at, at home yelling at the you know iPhone, what he won? Sorry, I can't hear you. He got director that we deserve. No, wait, director <laughs> that we do not deserve. <laughs> What was the Dark Knight line? It's not the director that we deserve. It's the director that we need. <laughs> yeah. Everybody at home's yelling at you now. It's the <laughs> anyway. What I'm come saying, at me about those exhaust pipes on the Death Star. Come at what me. I'm saying is bottom line. That's what I like to hear. Yes, I like to hear that because I want to believe that this guy is going to make an excellent movie, an excellent yes. Batman movie. Yes, and you know, at the same time, it's not ha- it's not a super exciting thing to hear about. Yeah. Um, also want to ride on the coattails of, of Batman news, Batman V Superman composer, the one and the only, the legendary Hans Zimmer is going to perform in an unlikely place. Coachella. Next to Beyonce and Kendrick. What? What? That's an interesting Not next to Beyonce and Kendrick. I mean, like not on the stage at the same time. He's going to be. Although I would pay to see it. And if anybody can rap, if anybody can put bars on top of Hans Zimmer, it's Kendrick. Probably. But you know what? Now I'm just gone and disappointed myself because we we set up this this miscommunication, and now I'm thinking, dang, I wish that would though. I don't think I want that. I wish that would. I think Kendrick is good where he's at. That Wonder Woman theme, that thing, that slaps. I want to see Kendrick. <laughs> oh, <God>. That slaps. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I need Kendrick to do that. Well, anyway, do you have plans to go to Coachella? Have you ever been to Coachella? Uh, no, sir. I, I am very interested in going to Coachella at some point in time. I mean, time if I had an opportunity, I would my go, life. but I don't, I don't, you know, I don't know. I, I don't have any plans anytime soon. April 14 through April 23rd, 2017. If you are looking for a reason to see Hans Zimmer perform live next to KDOT. Or, it, or it's probably same, not going to happen in the same vicinity <laughs> at a different time. Yeah. But that's something that to be excited about in general. That's something that I'm excited about. I would like to uh, switch gears a little bit and talk about something that I'm not excited about. Our man Simba Sparks tweeted at me. What up, Simba? What up, Simba? He sent me an image from Marvel's solicitation coming up. Marvel puts out a solicitation, a big catalog of all of the comics that are coming up for an entire quarter, if not longer. And as part of that solicitation in that catalog... An advertisement for Man Thing, the limited series written by R.L. Stein that I have a conflict over. Do you? I would like to share. You brought some that words. conflict into 2017. I huh? have to. Okay. I have to. All right. Don't Thought maybe you would have left it behind. New Year, New thing, You. That thing stuck to me like muck. Wow. Like like muck on Man Thing. <laughs> I I have to read <laughs> like this muck to on you. Man thing. Like muck, I was on that thing like muck on Man Thing. You know muck is on Man Thing. You see. So look, I have to bring this up to you because I want to read a few words from this advertisement, this industry advertisement. This was written to get you hype for the Man Thing limited series, okay? And here's what I want you to do, Octavius. Okay, I'm with you. I want you to 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 say a word, make a noise, maybe like a yup, mm-hmm. as soon as you think I've got a problem. Okay. Okay? I'm going to read you. this to you right now. Got you. <clears throat> After working for years, Man-Thing has regained his ability to speak. That's it. (laughs) And has taken Hollywood by storm. That's it. But when an ancient and mysterious danger threatens the swamp, Man-Thing is going to have to choose between his new life and celebrity. That's it. And the world he used to call home. 
<laughs> All right, I got I, we, I, you see here we just diagram that I yes. got some problems with this yes so I wanted to bring this up because I want to say first shout out Simba Sparks for sharing this with me thank and, you for the five stars and a positive comment and ruining my day <laughs> promptly <laughs> and I had to just kind of I feel like comic book Junto is a safe space it's a comfortable safe space I can bring this stress with me talk about it exercise this Join the bring it to the junto. We're here for you. I don't I don't I don't even have much that I want to say on this. I just want to read this out loud to you. Okay. So you can you you feel what I'm feeling, right? I, I'm with you. You hear the words, and there's just congratulations. Man thing Deadpool is happening. Manpool. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> Manpool 2017. <laughs> I'm, look, I'm going to Coachella. Manpool I'm sure, 2017. Pretty sure they got Manpool at Coachella. In fact, I think that's a band that will be performing <laughs> alongside Hans Zimmer. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, Hans Zimmer backed up by the one and the only Manpool. Man Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. And let me tell you, it, it slaps. <laughs> it slaps. Oh, man. <laughs> Hold on. Second thing, Simba Sparks, you sent me this photo from your cell phone. God bless. There's a, a dirty spoon on the left side. Of this <laughs> <catalog. laughs> I'm sorry. I, I just got to put you on blast, man. Oh, I love man. you. Oh, man. That was funny. Okay. That's what I got. All right. Okay. That sounds like <laughs> you are frustrated, but there, you know, God is with you. And <laughs> yeah. he is a healer and a provider. <laughs> he will provide for you and heal your ailments. Thank you. Praise God. My face hurts. In the mighty name. Mm -hmm. All right. So here we go. Um, one thing that I want to talk about that uh, I forgot to put on here, but it's very important. Mm -hmm. Ronda Rousey. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ronda Rousey. Let me just ask you this real quick. Mm -hmm. Is her career over? In what? In, I mean, this was MMA, yeah? Her career as an MMA fighter or her career period? In, in MMA. Uh, well. <clears throat> Catch y'all up, Ronda Rousey. So let's talk about this. Don't Spoil got knocked out. Spo spoilers. If you haven't seen it. Is it, it, <laughs> is it a spoiler? I'm, I'm just letting, you know, look, I would assume if you're on the internet, you know about this already. Um, because UFC is such a, like, regular thing now. It's, I just think. I mean, it was, you know, it was an event. It was a sporting event, but can you do yeah. a spoiler for a Super Bowl? No, 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 I mean, like, what I've done, what I've done is I've sent people highlights. Word. I've sent my buddy highlights, and he goes, thanks, I hadn't seen the fight yet. And I was like, oh, uh, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? Well, hey, look, you, you're going to have to dodge a lot better than Ronda yeah, Rousey yeah, you, <laughs> in order to like, avoid these headlines. Because, Good one. <laughs> truly, like these memes, man, they're out there. Yeah, and I'm. Um, I hate to say this to you if you haven't experienced it firsthand, but 46 seconds knockout. Yeah. I think yeah. it was. I think it was 46. Seconds. 48 seconds. I 48 think. seconds. Man, pardon me for shaving two seconds off. Uh, heck. Mm. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, that was. Here's what I think about though. Sometimes I think you know it's only. Hey, do you know how how much time you need to stay on the back of a bull in a rodeo? No. In order to qualify, no. It's a very short amount of time. You mm -hmm. need to stay on for like eight seconds. Okay. It, it's a very short amount of time. So I think about this and I think, how long would I be able to stay in this ring? Not for forty eight seconds. Tell you that. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna get slugged in the jaw one time. I'll go to sleep. So. Props for being brave enough for being in that squared circle. Sure. Octagon. With the octagon, rather. Yeah. But oh. Amanda Nunez put in that work. So here's the thing. Uh, either way, I think it's about 48 seconds. A very short period of time. Spoilers. Amanda Nunez um, went ham sandwich on Ronda Rousey. She, she, she put them paws on her. She, she brought them hands. And Ronda looked a mess. Yeah. Here's the thing. Immediately. Here's the thing that I think about. Well, before I talk about what I think, what do you think? What do you think about it? Do you so, think she's done? Uh, I like Ronda Rousey, and I know that Ronda Rousey is, is a household name now. Yes. And a lot of that has to do with some of the cameos that she makes in some other geek culture. For example, she was in The Last Fast and the Furious. Yes, she was. She was in that film. Yes. And she attended WrestleMania, not this past year, but the year prior. And she was wearing a Dragon Ball Z shirt. And it's very easy and exciting to root for Ron Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey plays Pokemon like a champion. She's I didn't a, know that. She is a geek, my dude. She is a geek. And she is a geek that can throw down against a lot of people. 
But she's also got a lot of hype behind her. And she's got a lot of ego inside of her. And it's disappointing to see something like this happen because I want her to do well because I feel like she's on my team. What's your team? Geeks. Okay. Just like nerd culture, you know? So, yeah, I'm, I'm saddened to hear that it went out like this, but I don't know if she's done. Maybe she's just done in MMA or she's got, got to change up her game. She's got to figure out a way to uh, fail the right way. Well, here's, it's interesting you bring that up. So here's what I think about Ronda Rousey. I think Ronda Rousey has done a lot for um, popularizing the sport of mixed martial arts, specifically popular, popularizing UFC and making that a household name. Sure. She's done a lot for women in sports. She's done a lot for women's MMA specifically. And with that being said, I think that Ronda Rousey has been a one-dimensional big fish in a small pond for the majority of her MMA career. Okay. And if you've watched MMA for any period of time, you have seen Ronda Rousey like people come and go. Mm. Since I've been watching UFC since 1994, mm. I have seen those unbeatable one-dimensional fighters come, dominate, and then someone goes, oh, Give me three years. I'll be back. Uh, when you say one-dimensional, you mean she's got one trick up her sleeve? Not one trick under up her sleeve, but mixed martial arts is just that mixed martial art. And she's primarily like grappler. Grappling. She's a, 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 Submission. a, a fantastic um, judo specialist, and her arm bar is crazy. But she does stuff on the mat. Well, it's what not, happened against Nunez it's, it's none not, of that. It's not just that she does things at the, on the mat. Back in the day, what happened was with, with the UFC, nobody had ever heard of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu before. Okay. So this skinny Brazilian guy named Hoist Gracie comes in with a gi on, and people are like, what's this guy going to do? I specifically remember my uncle bringing me up saying, hey, sit down and watch this, because I'm in the karate and Ninja Turtles and Taekwondo and yeah. Steven Seagal and Jean-Claude Van Damme and all these, and learning martial arts with him. He's like, who do you think is going to win? And I'm like, the big guy, obviously. Yeah. So... Next thing you know, the big guy's tapping on the floor. You're like, what just happened? Whatever that little guy did, I need to learn that. But he had knew something no one else knew. Mm. And he was so much better than everybody at that thing. Mm. He was dominant. Mm. What happened was eventually wrestlers found out if I learned enough jujitsu, which is what that that little Brazilian guy named Hoist Gracie what, knew, mm -hmm. if I learned enough Brazilian jiu-jitsu to avoid being submitted, yeah. I can dominate you with my strength and size and athleticism. Right, right. So then wrestlers dominated for a while, and wrestlers destroyed strikers. And then strikers learned, well, hey, if I learn enough jiu-jitsu to not get submitted, and I learn enough wrestling to not get taken down, they can't strike with me. Yeah. So then strikers dominated for a long period of time. Just goes back and forth. You see forth. what I'm saying? Yeah, and then course. eventually what happened is, the sport of MMA started to get rounded out. Uh -huh. And then you had these amazing athletes who've been training since youth, who are amazing submission fighters, amazing wrestlers, amazing strikers, and they started to kind of like balance themselves out and they started to become who's the better athlete, mm. who's the, in, in best shape, who has the best. So it started to be less of this kind of, wow, you have this special move that I can't stop. Mm. That's why I say... Ronda is a rather one-dimensional big fish in a small pond. I see. Because women's MMA is not as advanced. It's in its infancy stages. Let me say that. I see. It's still at that point back, like I saw early in MMA, where it's like regular men's MMA, which is like, wow, this guy's dominating everyone because he's really good at this thing that nobody else is good at. Sure. So it's only a matter of time that the, the competition rises to the occasion and just gets just as good as you as that thing or good enough to avoid you doing your thing. Yeah. But you're not as good as them. Uh -huh. That's what happened with Holly Holm. I see. Holly Holm was like, I'm not going to let you touch me. I'm going to kick you in your throat. Yeah. You know, Manny Nunez is like, I got, I got them hands for you. I'm going to get aggressive. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be athletic. I'm going to move around and you can't stop me. Yeah. And unfortunately... Ronda Rousey's coaching team has not done a good job. She just looked terrible in there. She looked like she had no business in that ring with a man. Yeah, no, no. She was immediately on the defense. As a fan of evading. MMA, you're little. You're, you're like, why is she in that octagon with her? Yeah, she looks like an amateur. Would you say the reason she was in the octagon was strictly promotions? Was strictly... Oh, I, I'm not. I'm not ready to say all that. Like, right. I don't know, but I do know from hearing interviews that Ronda Rousey was already talking about this being one of her last fights. Okay. So I was already like, yeah, she's on her way out. Mm -hmm. Now, what I will say is this: 
if you don't get a new coaching staff, a new team collectively, and really take the sport of MMA seriously, you're going to just have to hang it up and quit because you're going to get hurt in there. Yeah. MMA is an extremely combative sport. These women are hungry, and they're going to take your head off. They're going to take your arm off. They're going to take your foot off. Like, they're not playing with you. Yeah. Like, so if you want to go in there and try to just reach out and grab somebody, like, they're going to be nice to you. Yo, this the, Amanda Nunez was trying to hurt her. That's her job to hurt people. That's the goal. So, like, you can't play around. You cannot be like, and that's. It, 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 I mean, it's just, and I and I, I don't want to take anything away for what Ronda Rousey has done for the sport and done for women in sports, but I don't think Ronda Rousey and Serena Williams should be mentioned in the same conversation. Uh, yeah, I You see what I'm saying? Because like, consistency is certainly not... Yeah, it, she's... It, this is not shared. Mm -mm, like, Serena Williams is... She is consistently the champion. Yes. Like, she she puts out something incredible every single time she performs, and she switches it up. Right. She changes it. Like, now, Ronda Rousey, no one can take anything away from what she's done, but... She's not going to be able to hang. She's not, not... And I don't think she has... has has it in her heart to continue to do what it takes. It doesn't mean she can't do it. I don't know that she wants to do it because she's been very arrogant mm -hmm. and she's been pumped up to be very big. And the majority of her career, I've been like, but you ain't never fought nobody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We've never seen you go five rounds. We've never seen you go and get hurt and get beat up. We never seen those of you who watch MMA. We never seen um, Kale Sanderson and Anderson Silva, where Anderson Silva gets beat up for five rounds and then submits him with seconds left. That's a twenty-five minute. We've never seen Ronda Rousey do anything like that. Yeah. So for me, as a fan for like a very long time, I'm just waiting for for me to see you have a real fight before I'm really ready to go. Whoa. Mm -hmm. and, and the first time she had a real fight, she got dropped. The second time she had a real fight, she got dropped. Yeah. So. Yeah. Make it make up your mind, Rhonda. Has she made any statements after the fight? Has she said anything along the lines of her intention? Um, I know that people have talked about her. There's been a lot of speculation, a lot of memes, a lot of people speaking on behalf of hers. A lot of people. Uh, I mean, there's even a photo of her hugging a fan. Yeah. Out of a you know, and and that dot, and a lot of people who have never been in a combative sport, maybe they don't understand. You just got beat up. It's <laughs> soul crushing. Oh yeah, like, I've wrestled. I've done Muay Thai. I've done Jiu-Jitsu. I've done martial arts. Getting beat up, yeah, you shed tears. It hurts. Yeah. Like I mean, you give it your all, and you wake up on the ground. Like what happened? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. that's that that crushes your spirit, and that kind of stuff really makes people go, I don't know if I want to do this. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, and that doesn't make you less of anything, but when you really go through it and you get your bell rung and you lose a tooth or you break a rib, maybe I don't want to do this for a living. It takes a yeah. certain kind of person to put themselves through that kind of punishment, you know? See, that's the thing is I, I was I was just about to enter my hat into MMA. Yeah. But it's like, you know, the single kidney thing. And exactly. Like, you know, that's the, that's the thing that's holding me back. Right. But if it wasn't for that, I'd be in there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, you know, everybody count your blessings yeah. you, you don't got to face off with jump man <laughs> not 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 that jump man the other jump man yeah adam jump man tetris exactly mm -hmm. right so one other thing real quick this is not um exactly what we know is going to happen but there's a whole bunch of conversation about the wwe mm. i mean that's always one of the places that mma fighters can go and make a dollar mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so i don't think it'd be a bad move for ronda to consider going to the wwe because they're gonna be throw some money at her that would be interesting because the the wwe has really been stepping up their the their women performance their 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 women superstars yeah they've done away with the title and the label the divas they're less of others and those mm -hmm. fights some of those the uh uh matches are amazing like my favorite to watch these days so having ronda change over to the wwe look if you're an mma fighter you can't just become a pro wrestler because it's not the same thing sure you got to train yeah you got to train the, and the you athleticism need to, and the story is already there absolutely you just Conor mcgregor to, would have no problem like if he want again if he wanted to yeah i'm sure but it's like i mean it is a fundamentally different game sure entirely and you need to learn how to collaborate with somebody else in the ring mm -hmm. rather than put them to sleep right you know and like that's like oh you're really good at running races all right then you'll be awesome at improv like well 
I guess because I I got great cardio mm -hmm. and I can like keep up. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't necessarily mean that I would understand how to work with other people in the ring. Sure. And, and you and I, we we tried yeah. to be pro wrestlers. We went through some training. Yeah. And it's it, uh, the things that I learned, and I say this totally seriously, even though it sounds ridiculous. One of the things that I learned when training to be a pro wrestler at Chikara was one of the things that I brought with me to survive 2016. Okay. And it was an ethos of shared weight. Mm-hmm. I don't pick you up. You do not pick me up. We pick each other up. If if we're doing a move in which one person stays on the mat and the other one doesn't, mm -hmm. that is an equal amount of effort from both people or it doesn't work. Right. And I think that's legit. Shared weight, putting in effort, meeting the other person in the middle, no matter what it looks like, no matter what the result is going to be, even if I'm body slamming you, we work together on making that thing happen. Yeah. That's difficult. Yeah, I got to say. And if you're going from competitive sport to that, that's difficult. I got to say, from doing martial arts, mixed martial arts, and all that kind of stuff, yeah. doing wrestling training, it's definitely different. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to go, yeah, I'm not with this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, it's not a tough, It's, it's yeah, you got to be tough, but you got to want to do it. Yeah, absolutely. If you don't feel like being bothered, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. It's not going to work. Yeah. So one last thing about WWE, there's a video floating around of Ric Flair, 67 years old, Woo! deadlifting 400 pounds. The nature boy, defying nature. Uh, wait, wait, what's he say? I will never retire. And then he has 17 he next to it, which, which from what I've done, my, my Googles, doesn't John Cena have 16 championships going for 17? I believe that's true. So maybe Ric Flair is either saying, I'm coming back, slash, probably not, just talking that trash. Ric Flair... Let's get real. I used to live in Texas. Okay. You see a lot of tanned leather. Oh, gosh. In Texas. Ric Flair looks like something that you could buy inside of a Fort Worth Stockyards Texan home goods store. Because that dude is tanned leather. He doesn't look too good. He's a certain kind of orange red that doesn't exist anywhere else on this planet. Hmm. He, I don't know how he still exists other than being an actual robot, like being a machine <laughs> inside because he has put himself through so much hell, through so much physical exertion in his life. And he looks beat the hell up. It looks like the sun tried to kick his ass. Did you see the deadlift? Yeah, I watched the deadlift. The deadlift Look at him. was not good form. No. But he was extremely strong, specifically because of how bad the form was. Yes. You know what I mean? Like that, that is that, that dude is strong. That is definition of not sustainable though. Like you can't Well, you know, I, I would I would argue that he can deadlift 400 pounds at 67 years old because he's been training. You don't just wake up at 60 oh, yeah. plus no, 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 and no, deadlift no. 400. I would he he only reason why this, we, like I've talked about this all the time strength takes a long time to build but it takes a long time to go to go away yeah you know endurance come and go like the wind so one of the most important things for you to have as you get older is strength because yeah. one of the reasons that old folks end up in old folks homes because they don't have the strength to get around and do things on their own yeah so he can deadlift four hundred at that age because of all the training but he's not going to be able to go out there and come up off that top rope though you know you know who else is orange who uh who can't deadlift 400 <laughs> who's come that? to think of it who's that donald j trump yeah who is three years older than rick flair rick flair is out here do you think he can deadlift, deadlift his body weight i do not think so no i don't think he can do much of anything okay i don't think he's lifting anybody Listen, internet, just a, just a word from your friendly neighborhood, um, Octavius, a.k.a. 21 Savage Land. Um, <laughs> be able to buy, back squat your body weight. And yeah. Be, be able to deadlift your body weight in half. That's a survival skill. Just going to throw that at you. You uh -huh. should be able to back squat your body weight, no problem. You should be able to deadlift your body weight in half. And that's it. That's all I got for the news. Yeah, that's it. That's the news. We're all just right. going to move right along then. Hey, everybody, we don't have any talk back segments to include today. But nothing from... Email, nothing from Twitter. Get on that voicemail, though. 867-5309. <laughs> I don't think that's the number. But in all seriousness, though, if you do want to leave us something for talk back, um, one way we can do that is by 
email at comic book junto, I mean comic book junto at barefoot.com. Also, you can hit us on Twitter, hashtag AskCBJ, and we got a voicemail yeah. number 215-894. Let me start over. 215-948-2742. Hit us there. And remember, make sure you say that you don't want this to be um, on the show. Otherwise, it could be on the show. Very important. Mm -hmm. All right. So let's go into comics. We'll go into the pool list. I had a light week this week. Me too. Oh, happy brown bag day. Happy brown bag day to you. And internet, happy brown bag day to you as well. But I'm, I'm feeling a little relief from the past few weeks because I'm picking up tons of books last week and the week before. So it's, it's not a bad thing to have a lighter list so I can catch up on some of my books. I have a stack at home, by the way, like stuff that I have not read yes. for weeks, and I need to fix that. But today, in alphabetical order, I picked up U.S. Avengers number one. I do not know how to say the name of this. U.S. Avengers, does that sound right? I guess. USA Avengers? Go USA Avengers? Stick with it. Or whatever. Roll with it. Picked up Batman number 14. We're going to do for our book of the week today. I picked up Hawkeye number two and the Unstoppable Wasp number one. Let me say quickly. Yeah. My pick, even though we're not going to do it for book of the week, my pick, 100% my favorite book that came out this week, the Unstoppable Wasp number one from Jeremy Whitley. And Elsa Sheratier. This book is so good. I, I made other people in my office read it today. Read this now. It is so good. It is so good. So I highly recommend it. What'd you get? I got two books. Two books. This is one of the first times ever we start in 2017 off with something new, which will probably going to never happen again. Mm -hmm. First time ever I have less comic books than you do. Yeah, that's true. Two books. Never happens. Batman number 14, The Walking Dead, 162. You didn't get into this USA Avengers? Nah, I didn't pick that one up. I, I just didn't, you know, I didn't even look at it twice. I saw that Squirrel Girl was on the front and I just went for it. Well, yeah. What can I do? But we're going to get into Batman number 14. We're going to talk about this one. Now, this is a two-part series called Bat and Cat. Is that what it's called? Or no, On the Rooftop, right? Yeah. Uh, this one is, what, DC Presents Rooftops or something along those lines? Yeah, DC roof, Comics roof, Presents Rooftops, part, rooftops one. part one of two. Yeah. So this is a two-part series, and I think this is kind of like the in-between, um, the last arc and the next arc, because in the next arc, from what I see, we're going to kind of, in a way pick back up a little bit. Yeah. So it's a little bit of a break. So this seems to be what happens after last time. Um, you know, Amanda Waller sent Batman to go out there to where Bane's at. Whole little suicide squad. I am suicide. Yeah. They accomplished their mission. And the whole time there's this sexual tension, you know, ro like my job is to run, Catwoman says, your job is to chase me, Batman. Yeah. Kind of thing. And we and had that issue in during I Am Su Suicide in which uh, the entire thing was narrated by Catwoman. So she's talking about you know the relationship that she has with Batman. We have uh, another issue in which Batman is talking about his relationship with Catwoman and how kissing her gives him that moment of taking some pain away because they share their source of pain. And this, after I Am Suicide is over, this is, it's like some catharsis. Yeah. This is Batman and Catwoman's idea of date night. And the Which reason- is very interesting. It's very interesting. And the reason that they're taking advantage of this right now is Catwoman served the purpose that she was enlisted for in the, the new Suicide Squad. They got Psycho Pirate out of Santa Prisca and Batman talked to the President of the United States about- letting Catwoman off easy because she is wanted for, what is it, 237 people? Yeah. Yeah. So he's like, hey, look, we're not going to give you uh, uh, execution. Not going to give you death, just life in prison with no parole. Thanks. Yeah, what a gift. Appreciate that. But that means that this on this evening, um, they have some time to spend with one another in right. an unconventional well, way. Well, Batman's like, look, I'm going to take you. So Catwoman's like, tonight, I want tonight to just spend how I want to spend it. Um, 
And of course, they have some very like interesting tension and dialogue. You see the te- sexual tension. You see the tension of Batman doing his job and arguably Catwoman doing her job, which is running away and trying to seduce Batman. Also, relations. It's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot there going on. It's yeah. not an easy situation. And this is not one of those scenarios where you see Batman is like, I'm Batman. I do this thing. It's like, uh... No, he's, he's yeah. a little vulnerable. I kind of know what i'm quote supposed to do but what i want to do ain't what i'm supposed to do yeah yeah absolutely i really like the line in the beginning this is tom king at his finest uh in which catwoman is saying they have my life without parole but this night right here tonight look at it bat it's a diamond it shines and that'll come back later in the book right I really like the way that Tom King puts those things together. It's th- This is a, a signature of his. I think we would be able to recognize this kind of writing in other books. Now, I've mentioned it before. It's like a poetry. He puts a form of poetry into Batman, into whatever it is that he's writing. If it's Omega Men, if it's The Vision, if it's this. Uh, I mean, I just think it's, it's awesome. It yeah. works nicely. So they're on top of the roof. And they're having conversation, and Catwoman goes, or Batman goes, what will we do? Catwoman goes, it's late, the air is cold, our beds are warm. Damn! So, <laughs> so you know where Catwoman's like, she's like, hey, listen, you know what I mean? I got a couple ideas. Um, and then she says, what do you want to do? With a smirk on her face, like flirting, like, oh, yeah. hey, our beds are warm, what do you want to do? Batman sees the bat signal go off behind her and he does the little thing where you know where you like someone's right in front of you, but you look by them, you kind of move your head. You're like, uh, well, yeah. And then we cut to Clock King. Oh, of course, it's got to be Clock King. Have you ever even heard of Clock King? Never in my life. I love the fact that Tom King does such a great job (laughs) of adding serious, but adding like this comedy in at the same time oh yeah and i want to believe that these are existing villains that he's just dug up yeah that we've never heard of like yeah. have you ever heard of kite man no not until this well if it, if they're not real they're real now as you far familiar as I'm with the condiment king yo this is my first is that a joke i don't know i want to know can we get can we get tom king on the show i would love tom king to come on the show just to just to talk to us about condiment king. listen if internet. that came from elsewhere i want to know if he created it up i want to know this is the internet at tom king let him know that you want him to be on please Kong, so. we demand answers <laughs> please we need to know if condiment, condiment king. we need to know if condiment king is real and where did kite man kite man come from and condiment king got ronda rousey in this one Jeez. really he yeah. took one on the jaw but he but he ain't giving up though no he's sticking with it he's <laughs> probably against his better judgment but he's doing it anyway so we see uh, this awesome awesome moment again of dialogue with action which seems to be a thing that tom king does a lot with yeah. batman and catwoman where they're talking and Throwing hands at the same time. So it's so funny that (laughs) Clock King says, you see, time, dear Batman, is not on your side. I have prepared for this confrontation every day for years. The next seconds, minutes, hours are entirely under my control. Through precise... (laughs) I can't keep it up. Precise calculation, I have anticipated each move you are about to make. Each move will thus be countered. Each move will thus result in your death. And Meanwhile, Catwoman, Catwoman it smashes through the window <laughs> and knocks his teeth out of his mouth. <laughs> like, that's great. That's great. You got the serious and then you got the comedy. She she pulls that, uh, I'm gonna let you finish, but <laughs> yeah, smashes through the clock face. Just pow. Right in the kisser. He did not factor in Catwoman. Yeah. And Catwoman trying to get this over with because the, the night's cold and the beds are warm. Exactly. And she says, are we done? Bat signal goes up. <laughs> right. Batman's like, well. And it's almost like Batman's actually considering it, but he's like, well, but you know, I got I to gotta work. I loved the next series of panels. There are, uh, what I think, nine different panels that show the bat signal, nine different villains that are getting worked. We got Magpie. We got Signal Man. We got Amygdala. We got Gorilla Boss. <laughs> Gorilla Boss. Is that a guy? I don't know. Ten-Eyed Man. Okay. King Snake. I think I've heard of that one before. Werewolf. Copperhead. Is that Copperhead? No, that's 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 Marvel. That's Marvel. Condiment King. Condiment King. Condiment King. And it looks like he's got like 
condiments on the sides. Like, what you know, is like this the, bull's agenda? The beer, the beer hat where you can drink beer out of your hat. Oh, I will positively relish fighting oh, you. Oh man, you, you know should, that's what he's you doing. Should, you should, you should write. I'm faster than you, Batman. You can't dare to catch up. Oh, you know that's, you know that's what's happening. And these are off the top of the dome. Mm-hmm. Unless Absolutely. you play these beforehand. Yeah. Are you better fighter than I am? I don't think you'll cut the mustard. <laughs> that's condiment king. Good one. Thank you. That's fantastic. That's all the condiments. Every yeah. single one. I don't know how he uses sriracha up in there. <laughs> I, I, can't, I got nothing. My brain's spinning. I got nothing. You don't have... So you can't... Because... <laughs> Relish. You know what goes with everything? <laughs> Sriracha. I don't know. Nah, not really. That's not what kings. But anyway, look, everybody's getting worked. Conversation going on here. Um, <laughs> Catwoman's like, it's like this every night. And he goes, no, not every night, but most nights. And then she says to him, and hey, what do you do when it's not most nights? And he goes, I prepare for most nights. So it's yeah, like, you prepare for what for most nights? Yeah. And then, you know, she asked him, do you ever get tired? Batman goes, no. And then he's like, okay, yes, I get tired. So it's, you know, what do you do when you get tired? And she goes, you prepare. I prepare. <laughs> so it's like this guy, man, Batman's life does not sound fun. No, but they're having a blast. And then it doesn't stop there. They're going fighting Cavalier, Zebra Man, Film Freak, Mad Monk. Is Film Freak a guy? Do you think Film, what do you think Film Freak stands on Rogue Film, One? Fi- <laughs> <laughs> Film freak, I imagine. Rogue One's not necessary. Batman was like, "That's it. Hold just, on, Catwoman." Wow. <laughs> Guess him right in the face. Yeah, I don't know. I imagine Film Freak is like Calendar Man, where Calendar Man is uh, like activate hatching these plans. Is Film Freak to running around spoiling movies for everybody. Ooh, Film Freak is the natural e- enemy of the Blackout Congregation. Oh you my know gosh! This to be true. Wow. You know this, man. Yeah, we figured it out. Watch out for Film Freak, guys. Absolutely. And uh, meanwhile, Catwoman is, is, is retelling a little poem. And the poem goes, There once were two cats of Kilkenny. Each thought there was one cat too many. So they fought and they fit and they scratched and they bit till, accepting their nails, the tips of their tails, instead of two cats, there weren't any. The two cats killed each other, tore each other apart. Yeah. And Batman is just doing his thing all the while. I'm like, Catwoman is just hanging back and Batman is beating up on people and it finally gets to the man, the myth, the legend, the one and the only, Kite Man. Hell yeah. Kite Man <laughs> showing up in these books is is just, it's never going to get old for me. I love it. I love it. Yeah, it's very good. So this is what Date Night looks like on Batman's terms and they decide to switch it up a little bit and do something the Catwoman wants to do. Mm-hmm. And Batman is really just not here for it. He's, he's, uh, he's dragging behind and saying, I don't like this. This is, this is not something that I want to do. And Catwoman says, we did what you like, and now we do what I like. And Batman says, I don't like what we did. I had to do what we did, uh, referring to fighting all of those villains. Right. And Catwoman says, oh, well then... Uh, let me say, I don't like what we're doing, <laughs> right. but I just have to do what we're sure. doing. And what they both like it. They're, they're breaking into uh, a building, mm-hmm. cutting a hole in the glass and sneaking into a building, doing that cat burglar thing that Catwoman is known for. And looking for the Victoria Cat. And Batman's done his research and he realizes that the place that they're inside of, uh, the lease has the name Holly Robinson on it. And he asks, who's Holly Robinson? He's the great detective, right? He's, he's got some research behind this. The caper. And Catwoman says, Holly Robinson is me. Steals the thing. They jump out a window. She blows up the apartment. Yeah. And they're just flying down the side of this building. And she's talking about why she stole this cat. And it's just like, you know, this is, this is what I expect of these two. If they have time to spend together, this is what their night looks like. There can be no normal. They don't go Netflix and chill. Nah. They don't go out to a restaurant. They go crime fight and rob. My cat woman is bad and bougie. <laughs> <laughs> is, is what's taking place here. Wow. Yeah. Your Selena, cat woman's bad and Selena bougie. Selena is bad and bougie. And, and that's what this book is about. And it is, it is so enjoyable, even though it has this inevitable pain behind it because Catwoman is going to get put away forever for all time. 
and this is the last opportunity to, that they have to spend time together. Or so we think. Or so we think. Yeah. Right. But lo and behold, the reason Selena wanted to steal this Victoria cat from that apartment is because it is where she has hidden the last of her fortune, a bag of many, 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 many diamonds. And she tells Batman, look, I'm not going to be needing this. So why don't you take these diamonds and open an orphanage? Or Batman, a don't, dozen. Uh, Batman don't need that money. Yeah, but it, you know, it ain't about that. But I don't think Catwoman knows. Well, she does know it's Bruce Wayne, obviously. Cause, yeah. Yeah. Because because what's about to go down? Show sure enough. Yeah. But, you know, I think this is her way of saying, look, if I'm going to get put away all the time, let me have some contribution to the world. Because I know if you open up an orphanage, that was me. Right. I did that. Exactly. And that's the, there was an orphanage that burnt down. Yeah, that was right. That mm-hmm. was right. Uh, and that was the cause, uh, I, I guess, for why she went on a killing spree and killed 237 people. Um, but uh, she she's got all these diamonds. She's like tossing them around and and that's that no more no more small talk no more vague stuff no more flirting it's going down batman catwoman rooftops dang D- rooftop drop top <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> yeah exactly. That's exactly it exactly so exactly. it goes down there you know they have what the kids call relations yeah raindrop drop top Batman Catwoman on a rooftop. There it is. Is what this is. That's way too long for... Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's way too long for a title, but yeah, that's fantastic. But I like, I like at, this, uh, at the end, you know, this is, this is when we get to see Batman vulnerable in, in a lot of different ways. One, he is giving in to what Selena wants. I mean, they, they strip, he takes his cowl off, they take their suits off, they are not on duty anymore, and they're on the top of the rooftops. And it goes down. Mm-hmm. They have relations. And yep. meanwhile, that they last- have sex. Oh, hey, don't say that too loud. We got the explicit John. Who on knows? That. Who knows who's listening to this thing? We're putting, right. we're putting that E up on this one. Well, it's on all of them, so they know. Uh, but it, on that last panel, even while this is taking place, uh, the Bat signal is shining up in the sky. Right. Which says two things to me. One, look, it's never over for Batman. Things are, it's never over for Batman. And two, he's got different priorities right now. He may be showing up a little late to that signal. Sorry, Commissioner Gordon. Mm-hmm. I had, you know, I had errands I was, to I was, run. I was busy. I had groceries to get. I was in the middle of something. Doing some laundry, you, you know, know I mean? you know. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was a little busy. Yeah. Uh, when you called, you know what I'm saying? I had my hands full. So <laughs> yeah, I, had I was my in, hands full. I was in the middle of something. I couldn't quite, uh, you know, get to the phone. But that's the last line that Selena started it off with. Uh, I want tonight. They can have my life without parole. But this night right here, tonight, look at it, Bat. It's a diamond. Right. It shines. Yeah. So do you think at the end of the next issue, issue 15, Catwoman goes free or she goes to jail? It's going to be hard to put Cat- a character like Catwoman away and just keep her there for a long time. I, like... You know, in comic books, they'll kill a character and bring the character back whenever they want to. Right. And this would, if they say, yeah, Catwoman's just going to be in prison life with no parole, that's effectively killing Catwoman because she's just gone. Let's just put her away because we don't need her for a long time. So I don't necessarily think that's going to last. Although I do think after chapter two of Rooftops, that Tom King is probably done with selena in this story mm. for a little while but i'm i could be wrong about that maybe she becomes kind of an informant or somebody who stays in the picture and just kind of works in the shadows from Blackgate prison who knows but i i really enjoyed this issue it's a change of pace it felt like a little reward after the last event the that that last arc i am suicide and i'm excited for the second issue i i feel like this was enough and I understand exactly what's happening and what's going to happen next. And it's interesting to me that this is a, a two part because I have no idea how they do a second part, but Hey, props to uh, writer and illustrator. It's, it is a beautifully written and beautiful book. If, Absolutely. If you pick up Batman, it's a no brainer. You're picking this one up for sure. Yes. So let's talk about next week. Mm-hmm. Um, so we got a nice handful. We had a low, a light week this week, but next week we got 
All Star Batman number six, and this is I think it's called this arc is called Cold to the Core. This mm-hmm. is where Batman is going to be taking on Mister Freeze. Mm-hmm. So that's written by um, Scott Snyder, but this one's illustrated by Jock. 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 Okay. Yeah. Sure. Not familiar. No. Okay. Well, I don't know. He's banging. You know him. I don't know him personally, but I know his work. <laughs> I'm not saying do you hang with him. I'm just yeah, saying we don't we don't we don't we don't hang out anymore. Okay. Um also something bad happened? I mean I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> okay. Something I'm excited about, Daredevil. Yeah. Number 15, New Arc, the seventh day. So there's a lot of stuff going on with Daredevil. There's a Kingpin comic coming out. Yeah. There's an electric comic coming Running out. Running with the devil is this big crossover. Right. There's a there's a Bullseye. Bullseye, Bullseye, and there's Daredevil. So I'm, I'm interested in Daredevil, possibly picking that up. Yeah. Um, Motor Crush number two. Okay. Occupy Avengers number three. Okay. Power Man Iron Fist number 12. Woo. So it's probably going, I really think 2017, I'd like to get into some new stuff. Yeah. Um, but there's some stuff I do want to kind of hang on to as well. Yeah. So um, let us know. Wherever yeah. you're listening, let us know what you guys want to see us um, read next week. Uh, what you want to see us do for the books of the week section, all-star Batman. That's a new arc. Everybody can start there. Maybe we can go into a different Batman series for a while. Yeah. We've been on Batman regular before. We can go to Batman, all-star Batman, daredevil, um, motor crush number two. I think that'd be good to say with it's yeah. hard to leave power man and iron fist. Cause we're still in the middle of an arc with that. Sure. Sure. So, and occupy Avengers, my man's coming. Oh yeah, Nighthawk is in this. Yeah, one. Nighthawk is showing up in Occupy. So we'll see. Let us know what you think at Octavius A. Newman at Adam Tetteris. Mm-hmm. Hashtag Ask CBJ for questions. Um, again, you can leave your comments on SoundCloud. Comments as you're listening. Leave us five stars and a positive comment on iTunes. Very important. Mm-hmm. Share this. Retweet this when we post it up on Twitter. Um, don't forget to leave us voicemails. That phone number again, 215-948-2742. Looking forward to that. Make sure you let us know if you want us to be on the show or not. Um, what else we got? Uh, that's what I got for right now. We do have one shots coming to you. Please pay attention to that YouTube page. That's really important to us right now. Subscribe because we want to make sure that we have subscribers. We want to make sure that you have your notifications set up so you know when a new one gets uploaded. Revisit some of those old episodes as they go up. Tell us what you think of those old episodes. Uh, listen to some of that stuff. Maybe it was something that you were reading a year ago or almost a year ago or a movie that you watched last year and you want to revisit some of those thoughts. Yeah. And, you know, share some of that stuff. And I'm excited to have that back around in the mix. I'm excited to be in a new platform to do stuff on YouTube. The more, the more good reception we see right now, the stronger we understand that we're in the right place, doing the right thing, and you want us to do more. is a win-win. So There it is. Yeah. I think that's it. I believe so. I believe this was a, a pretty good start to 2017. That's right. I would say so. All right. Still have not seen Shin Godzilla, but things going to change. That's going to be all right. <laughs> We're going to be all right. Mm-hmm. All right. So we love y'all. Thank you guys for tuning in. Until next time, peace. Peace. <laughs>